We need, we need some masala. So that's, that's water, how you encounter the rain and the snow to get water coming out your faucet hot and cold and drinking. So then connected with that is then the sewage. Uh, and that is, uh, that is the, bo the major component of that is this uh, thing right here that we call a botanical cell. The newer drawings of this are a little more evolved, but what a botanical cell is, it's, a, it, it's even that one back there is, is early. Everything in this building is early, but it's, it's rubber lined. It's a cell about three feet deep. It can be any length. Uh, we usually make the lengths uh, relative to how, much, how long the rubber comes so that you, can, don't have to, you don't want to have to splice it. But the botanical cell is usually Sometimes we have them in the first part of the building um, behind the first layer of glass. And uh, then we have them in the greenhouse, of course. And then we have them outside. And you can see one under construction outside at the Sutton house that Kirsten's going to take you to. But basically, your water is going through these rubber lined cells full of plants. The whole issue there is that plants clean up the water. Uh, the way they clean up the water. There's a bacteria. First of all, the botanical cell, as you can see, is, is full of gravel for two and a half feet. Then there's a little layer of sand or straw or both. The purpose of that is to keep the dirt from falling down into the gravel because the gravel, the voids in the gravel create a, a body of water that the plant, it's like hydroponics almost, that the plants always have access to a thousand gallons of water. The dirt is just to structure the plants because they're getting their nutrients from the gray water and you know some of it from the dirt, but mainly from the gray water. This drawing was made just from slicing into one of these and seeing what it looked like. The big rocks are what we call reception and, and uh, reception bulbs because that creates bigger voids of water so that, for instance, when your bathtub drains, it's gonna drain slow if it goes straight into the gravel. But if, it, if you have the big rocks, they're sized so that a whole bathtub can drain fast into the voids between the rocks and then it moves through the gravel. Uh, but it starts with uh, the water going into a device, uh, very similar to like the silt catch on your roof. Uh, you have to deal with the fact that out of your shower there's hair and parts of soap and whatever. Uh, and uh, in your kitchen sink there's all kinds of stuff, bacon bits and broccoli pieces and whatever. And so we used to, see we, we keep evolving, we used to want every drop of water to go through the botanical cells and then we recapture it at the end to flush with. And what's going on in the botanical cell is in the gravel there's a bacteria that come naturally that kind of attack the water and clean it up a bit. Uh, but the main thing that's going on is as the plant roots suck up the water, which they do, they put out oxygen. Their plant roots are just tubes and they're, they're sucking up water probably through a natural convection like we're sucking up air in the buildings. And as they suck up water, they have to evacuate oxygen. The oxygen oxygenates the water. It's what cleans it up. It's called oxygenation. That's what cleans up the water. And then if there's a certain transpiration and evaporation aspect. But that thousand gallons of water is moving through the botanical cell, getting sucked up by the plants, getting oxygenated, then it runs through a peat moss filter at the very end, then it drops in to a lower place and full of uh, big rocks again. There's a pump, that's a submersible pump that's down there that's set up on a pressure uh, switch so that whenever you flush your toilet, the water uh, comes on and that pump comes on. It's another little pump panel up there on the right. Whenever you flush your toilet, uh, the, the float valve in the toilet opens up a plumbing valve which turns on the pump and pumps gray, used oxygenated gray water into your toilet until it fills up and then it stops. So that's what goes on with this system and then, then the toilet goes on out to a conventional septic tank and I'll get into that. It's still contained. I'll get into that aspect of it. But there's gray, which is this, and there's black, which is the toilet. 
Well, what I was getting at is that the kitchen sink is kind of borderline because it has solids and pieces and parts in it. And we used to always run the kitchen sink into here because there's a balance. In other words, your daily activities have to produce enough water to deal with the volume of flushing that you do. So we would run all the water into the, here except for the toilet. Uh, but we found out that basically a home is balanced by the washing, the clothes washing machine, the sinks where you brush your teeth and wash, and the shower. That act, those activities produce enough water to give you enough to flush with. You don't need the kitchen sink. But we didn't know that for the first few years. So we had uh, we made these devices. There's a little tray to catch grease. This is called a grease and particle filter. Uh, a lot of the houses used to have them. I don't think any of the new ones have it anymore because now we're, we take the kitchen sink, we consider it black water, take it to the, to the septic tank with the toilet and deal with it that way. We still get enough water to flush with. The only out of balance thing about this is like a, a situation like here today. You guys are all using the toilet, but none of you are taking showers. So you're depleting our flushing water by not taking showers. So on the break, everybody should go in there and take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> help yourself, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, uh, solar hot water, uh, help yourself. Uh, so that'll help us get, otherwise Michelle has to go in there and stick a hose down the pipe and, and replenish the flushing water for you all to flush with. So, but in a normal home with two or three people living in it, they're taking enough showers to equate to their flushing. Uh, and there's a balance there, and we've gotten that together over the years, but we didn't have it together in the beginning. So we had to have a much, so see if you, if you're just filtering or silt catching your bath water and your clothes washing water, all it is is a little copper tray with holes in it. That catches the hair and whatever. Take it out every month or two and tamp it on a compost pile and be done with it. But when your kitchen sink ran into here, it was a grease and particle filter situation. It was a much more elaborate device. And that's a picture of it right there. And uh, what you'd have to do if, is uh, you'd go in and take that tray out, but it'd have bacon and hair and broccoli and grease and all kinds of stuff. It was pretty gnarly. And we'd go, you know, people talk. And so online, we'd hear people talking about, you know, how what a nasty job cleaning up, uh, cleaning out and servicing an Earthship uh, grease and particle filter was. Well, we've eliminated that now because we don't use them anymore because we run the kitchen sink in with the toilet. But it got so gnarly that we started going, okay, we'll, we'll respond to the people's complaints. And see that little inlet line, that little black inlet line, right there, uh, taking that, you know, all the stuff comes out of that and collects in that tray, and that tray gets pretty gunky. And uh, so we got the brilliant idea of taking a woman's hose and uh, radiator clamp, and we'd clamp, so the pipe, the pipe comes in like this, and all that stuff was going into this little tray. Well, we just radiator clamped a woman's stocking over there, and every couple of months that stocking would just, you know, it would get full, and be this big chunk of stuff, slimy thing, laying there, looking sort of alive. <laughs> and uh, whenever your tub quit draining properly, we'd know that the, the stocking needed to be changed. And so I had a maintenance guy that uh, used to do that all the time. And, and I knew if he wasn't around, I knew I would, if the people came to us and said it's not draining properly, why? I would know what to do, and I did it sometimes. And uh, one time we had one of these grease and particle filters right under the kitchen sink in the, the hut house, which is not online as a nightly rental anymore. Uh, it's a nice little building, but it's out of date. That's a picture of it over there, the white middle one on the left of the left thing. But anyway, underneath the kitchen sink doors there, you'd open the doors, and there's the grease and particle filter with a redwood lid, and you open the lid, and <clears throat> so anyway, this guy, the maintenance guy, uh, threw me a curve. He, he didn't just get a single woman's hose. He got pantyhose, put the full pantyhose on there. <laughs> and so the, the, uh, the, after about three months, the, 
the hut house quit draining properly. So he wasn't around, so I went in. I knew exactly what to do. I opened the kitchen cabinet doors, popped off the redwood lid, and these two legs slimy came slamming out and hit me in the face. It scared me to death. And just gunk all over me and everything. So that was really the inspiration for moving forward from that design. Uh, but it hasn't all been easy. Um, so it just, it, you know, that would definitely get written about online. So we don't even use them anymore. Now we just have a little copper tray. It catches the hair from the bathtub. The kitchen sink is plumbed to go with the toilet to the septic tank. And so, and we have found out that that's enough. People take enough showers and wash enough clothes and brush their teeth enough to create enough flushing water. And, you know, you don't, like in water conservation, they're always talking about uh, don't flush your toilet I I any more than you have to. Well, here it doesn't matter. Uh, you're flushing your toilet because you're flushing it with used water. It just changes the whole concept. We don't even care if you have a low flush toilet or not. Uh, so, of course, all toilets are low flush these days, I think. But this is just the kind of evolution. Uh, like we used to go, that's a, a little redwood cage for the, for the charcoal and peat moss filter. Now we have the charcoal filter on the waterboard, and it's just a peat moss filter. And still, we used to make a little redwood cage. It'd take a guy a day to make it and, and put the peat moss in it and all that. And that's evolved because now our, our botanical cell is linear, and it's about two feet wide and 25 feet long or so. And the gravel is all in here and everything. Well, we get a peat moss bale. They come in plastic bales. And we just cram it, we just take an ice pick and stab it a bunch of times, cram it into the uh, space, and the water has to go through it. In other words, we're just constantly getting the methods of doing this more and more simple, more and more straightforward, and work better. So we haven't had much problem with gray water uh, at all uh, in recent history. The, the corner cottage when has, we hit rock, and those botanical cells had to go laced up and down over rock and everything. And sometimes the water there doesn't move fast enough to the flushing well, and we have to run the bathtub to do in that one. Uh, the Phoenix has got huge gray water planters. It rarely, if ever, runs out of flushing water. And uh, th it definitely takes this system to the, to the limits. Uh, but anyway, you have what, you, what it is then is a botanical cell. You can have, uh, we put them in tandem, link them together. Uh, you'll see them in every building, inside the living spaces and in the greenhouse. Clearly, they have to be on the solar gain side of the house so they get sun because the plants growing is what sucks up the water and so we're basically there the first use of the water is taking a shower the second use of the water is growing food aloe vera grapes bananas whatever and then third use is flushing your toilet fourth use is landscaping which I'll get into uh, and so we have taken these botanical cells uh, now way far into food production. <coughs> we, we, the, a way that this uh, evolved, just like with the stockings, was we, before we invented all of this stuff, we were, uh, we were not going to make earth ships use flush toilets. We used compost toilets, which they work fine, but the, the 90 percent of the populace, you know, of the people, they want it to go away. They don't want to be dealing with it, you know, whatever. Uh, although compost is a great thing, lots of people don't want to deal with it. So we were still adamant about it. We were going to use compost toilets because we didn't want to flush away even at gallon and a half, back in those days it was five gallons, of water, every fresh, good new water. Especially if you're harvesting it from the sky, you can't afford to. We need, we need some masala.